Hi, this is Dave Farmer, and we're going to have a webinar today with a company called EasyFlow. They make um, products for fertigation where you can automatically, basically, fertilize your system by applying fertilizer within the irrigation system. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and what I'm going to do is let a person uh, called Darren Brash, who is the national sales manager for uh, Easy Flow, give you um, uh, a rundown of the product line, and then I'm going to take over the screen. And what I want to do is use Land Effects to add this particular uh, product line to three different types of projects: a small project, a medium, and a large one. And kind of the uh, questions you would ask as you're uh, dealing with each of those and how you would specify this and indicate it in your drawing on there. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to turn this over to Darren, uh, let him introduce himself and uh, present to you uh, uh, the product. So go ahead, Darren, you're on. Good morning. Uh, like Dave said, I'm Darren Brash. I'm the National Sales Manager for EasyFlow. Um, a little bit of background uh, from my experience. I've been uh, started out as a PGA golf professional in Scottsdale, Arizona. Went through their business school and agronomic program. Um, I then ran the parks department up in Aspen, Colorado for 10 years. I uh, got my master's gardener certification, arboricultural and turf grass certifications through Colorado State University. Um, attended 10 years of uh, turf grass management through the USGA. I worked for True Green Kimlon for a number of years. Got my applicator's license in a couple of different states with them. Had my own landscape company for a while. And have uh, did commercial injectors before I got into uh, this company with EasyFlow, and I've been with them over, I've been working with these guys for almost 15 years now. With that being said, I just wanted to run through our presentation. This presentation will also be available to you all uh, through email. Uh, we can we have it PDF, and we can uh, get this to you if you want a presentation right in front of you to review everything. Uh, fertigation is basically the application of fertilizer through the irrigation. Um, it's been around for many years. We didn't invent it. We basically simplified the process. Uh, our systems have no moving parts, no electrical needs. Um, there's virtually nothing to wear out in the systems. We have them operating for over 14 years with no issues. Independent studies have proven that fertigation is the most efficient way feeding all types of plant material, and we're going to kind of walk you through the sizing process and the implementation of that. Uh, to size our systems, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, uh, our experience has told us over the years, uh, turf requires about a pound of fertilizer per thousand square feet per month or every four to six weeks, uh, basically, until you establish a good uh, root zone and and soil fertility. Trees and shrubs, however, only need a half a pound per thousand square feet. And uh, that's based on our tests over the past 12 to 15 years uh, and seeing results all over the world. We sell to Italy, Hungary, Spain, South Africa, Australia, Germany. We have 1,200 distributors nationwide here to support our products as well. Um, this kind of gives you an idea but we're basically replacing 100 pounds of granular product with 10 pounds of water-soluble product. And the reason we can do that is uh, we get 90% absorption, and we have studies to back this up. Um, we could claim 100, but we can't control wind drift or misaligned heads. Uh, a granular under clinical conditions will get 20 to 30% absorption. Basically, what we're telling people is they don't eat a month's worth of food the first day of the month and not eat the rest of the month. So we're just micro-feeding your plant material the way it's been grown uh, in, from growers for 60 years plus. This shows you the seven different little mainline models that we offer. 
Uh, the EZ001, it holds 10 to 12 pounds of water-soluble product. It'll cover 10 to 12,000 square feet of landscape. If this was just a drip project or trees and shrubs only, this would literally go to 20 to 24,000 square feet of coverage with a gallon and a half system. And all the rest of the models go on their way up. We have sizing charts for this um, that are available as well uh, in our catalog that we can email you to. Um, breaking down a typical landscape, a uh, large commercial project of 96,000 total square feet, there's 58,000 square feet of turf, and there's 38,000 square feet of trees and shrubs on this particular project. So we need a pound per thousand on the turf, 58 pounds, to equal the 58,000 square feet, and a half a pound per thousand on the trees and shrubs, it's 38,000 square feet, so 19 pounds. We would need a capacity of 77 pounds of water soluble for this project, and our 10 EZ010 HC holds 75 to 100 pounds, so that would be the correct system for that project. Pretty simple. Um, we do have high flow systems that go all the way up into golf applications, so we can do anything from a residential to golf, and we have a simple sizing chart that we can email you. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You fill it out, email it to us, and we'll size that system properly for that project. But this kind of walks you through the whole process. Basically, we need the property size, the number of connections. If it's a large HOA, it might have 6, 10, 20. We've come across HOAs with 69 points of connection. Uh, quantity of fertilizer or product. Are you trying to provide nutrition or are you treating a problem? We need to know that specifically like on golf because we can feed acids, counteract salts, and things like that. Um, Mainline size, that depends on uh, if it's PVC, steel, ductile iron, or copper tubing. Uh, average flow rate is important on our high flow systems uh, because we're talking half inch tubing and, and uh, uh, some larger connections. Typical connection would be uh, our ball valve coupling. This, these are available from 3 quarter inch up to 4 inch. Anything larger than 4 inch, we use a saddle connection. Um, basically, it's a blue water in, green fertilizer out, and we're going to show you where that's installed slightly. Uh, it's mainly, we do a lot of work uh, with Netafim subsurface, Hunter, and, and uh, drip uh, companies around the world that uh, have low flow. And on our slow setting, we're feeding at a rate of a 20th of a teaspoon of fertilizer per gallon of water out. Our systems adjust automatically to pressure and flow, so it doesn't matter if you have a rotor zone, a spray zone, a micro spray, a drip zone, or subsurface. It's the same parts per million per gallon of water out, and our system adjusts automatically to that. Um, the part numbers are very simple, CBV 100 for 1 inch, CBV 200 for 2 inch, 250 for 2 and a half, etc. Mainline models, um, all these systems fit in a valve box, even our high capacity systems, and we give you the size of the valve box on the chart in the back of our catalog as well. Um, so you don't have to reference that out. Uh, it's all provided for you. We do um, have some technical information. Our flow range is anywhere from one drip emitter, two and a half gallons per hour at five pounds of pressure our systems operate. Most injectors um, require a certain amount of flow and are limited. We are virtually limitless. We do include a pressure release valve in the system for safety purposes uh, for water hammer. If it exceeds 150 pounds, it simply releases and resets automatically to prevent any uh, issues with overpressurizing the system. We uh, confused the engineers at Scott's Fertilizer. They didn't believe that you're adding water and not diluting product like their miracle Grow sprayer. Uh, there's some copycat systems like ours out there that don't do what we do. 
and uh, we had to build a clear tank. They put in their own Peters water soluble product, and you can see we layer the water on the top. This is under 80 pounds of operating pressure, and we agitate on the bottom um, through the seven week period until the tank is full of water. You can see the different striations that are separated in our system. It basically creates an invisible bladder pushing the product to the bottom. Uh, the parts per million stay the same all the way through the cycle until the tank is full of water. So it simplifies the whole process. Um, it's critical uh, whenever refilling and filling our systems uh, that you evacuate all the air from our systems. Air compresses, water doesn't. Um, basically that pressure release valve is for water hammer and not air release. Um, so as long as you overflow the system, and we have training modules for the contractors that walk them through the whole process, uh, the feed rates go from 15,000 to one, which again is equivalent to a 20th of a teaspoon of fertilizer per gallon of water out, up to a 400 to one. Um, this is based on a one inch mainline, uh, but that's equivalent to two teaspoons of fertilizer per gallon of water out. Now we can go up to 20 gallons an hour on our high flow and beyond uh, for golf and sports turf applications if we need it. The feed settings are pretty simple. This is only an eighth of an inch of, of movement here on the cap. It's a slow one, two, and fast. Basically, if you're establishing new plants and watering every day, you would want it on that slow setting. Um, if you're watering one day a week, like a lot of the country is restricted in and water management these days, um, you want it on the fast setting. Remember, we're replacing 100 pounds with 10 pounds. So we have to be consistent with that 10. And consistency is always the key. In addition, um, this kind of explains the math of the systems. At 15,000 to 1, our EZ003 is a 2.5 gallon system, so it's going to take approximately 37,500 gallons to empty. Uh, the five gallon system at 15,000 to one is 75,000 gallons to empty. The fast setting on the 10FX, which is a 9.4 gallon, 400 times 9.4 is 3,760 gallons. The slow setting would be 141,000 gallons to empty. So you can see there is quite a range of capabilities with the systems. Again, the systems adjust automatically to pressure and flow. So it's not like a typical injector where I worked on typical, like Anderson equipment that costs 10 times ours. Um, you don't have to calculate and pre-dilute product. A concentrate is there and we deliver it for you. So the system adjusts automatically to pressure and flow. This enables the system to feed consistently for you from start to finish. Uh, there are backflow requirements. Uh, we recommend follow all local codes. Uh, we do have a letter from the uh, University of Southern California uh, Foundation for Cross-Connection Control and Hydraulic Research. They looked at our patents. They looked at our flow design. We're an aspiration device, so they only require a, a PVB. We do not force product in. Uh, we simply pull product out. Um, RPZ, obviously, we want to be downstream of the RPZs <clears throat> or the PVBs uh, in the flow direction. Additionally, one of our patents is if that backflow fails and creates an air gap, our system airlocks within an eighth of an inch of water loss from the top of the cap. So virtually, there's maybe one teaspoon uh, that's going to backflow on the first day if that backflow failed and created an air gap before it locks itself down. Uh, remember, we're an aspiration device, not a pressure producing injector. Uh, we call ourselves these flow fertilizing systems uh, on, the, on the smaller models, the commercial size, uh, and then when we get into golf we, and ag, we call ourselves an injector because they understand that window. But describing our system, systems are aspiration devices. We do offer an eval option um, that allows you to control uh, the percentage of fertilizer to every zone. Um, it's a simple 
adaptation uh, that can be retrofitted at any point in time to our existing system. Because uh, right now, when we plug that system in, it feeds your trees, your shrubs, your flowers, your lawn, your garden, everything automatically. And the way we accomplish that is providing a full nutritional package. And plants take in what they want, when they want. Um, if you think about uh, a buffet, if you go to a buffet, you're not going to eat everything at the buffet. Well, plants work the same way as multivitamin for us. If we need zinc today, it absorbs, the body absorbs it. And if it doesn't, it just passes through. So trees are taking in one thing, flowers are taking in something else, turf is taking in something else, but the buffet is always there and you're microfeeding. So you eliminate the stress. We've got uh, a white paper with 38 independent university studies backing up everything I'm telling you today. Um, but that uh, has shown fertigation will reduce insect and disease activity by 40% or more. So the e-valve option, again, allows you to control the percentage to every zone. You do need a controller that allows you to run program D with A, B, or C. Most of the new controllers allow you to do that. And basically, you're just providing uh, a master valve type thing on the on the fertigation device. So you could run your turf at 100%. You could run your shrubs uh, at 20%. If you have natives, you wouldn't feed them at all. Uh, you can run 10%. Uh, um, if you wanted to run your trees and feed a certain turf area 80% and another turf area 100%. Um, the, the cost savings is pretty dramatic when you do this. Uh, we had a large landscape commercial contractor um, implement this and compare it to granular fertilization and deep root feeding. And in labor alone, he saved about $336,000 compared to traditional aspects. Um, we talked to uh, developers and showed them that we can turn a 15 gallon tree into a 24 inch box in two years, depending on the products you're putting in there. Uh, on one project alone, we would have saved him $300,000 in plant material alone. So um, we can grow that product into what you want. Typically, they have a three year grow in period before they sign off uh, to the HOA, and developers really like that. You're protecting that plant material that you put in, you're virtually eliminating transplant shock because you're feeding that plant every time you water, not just a big dose. Again, what we're trying to educate people on is soil fertility, and um, here's a couple systems that are pictured in valve boxes. Um, typical layout is your backflow. Uh, you have the ball valve coupling. I like to put it in a separate so you can adjust if you do put different products in there, you can use any liquid or water-soluble product in our systems without voiding the five-year warranty on the systems. Um, and uh, it's, it just allows you access uh, to that if you ever needed to control, because we have people putting molasses for natural sugars. Well, that's like glue, so you create a little extra horsepower by closing that valve. If you have low flow, you don't close it all the way. You just create a little bit more pressure differential on the, uh, the water inside. And that creates more pressure in the tank that forces the product out. But basically, it's an invisible installation. Once they're installed in valve boxes, you don't even know that they're there. We can also engineer and manifold several systems. We did a large soccer field in Palmdale, California. Uh, they had a vertical tank ordered but then they wanted it in the ground for security purposes, so we manifolded three 25-gallon systems and had one connection for that, and that gave them the adequate uh, coverage amount for the turf that they were feeding. We do uh, offer any uh, free quotes and so forth. We can do that for you. We do have CAD drawings, DWG drawings, written specifications on our website available for you all. Um, I did want to show you another presentation. 
Uh, for example, here's a sports turf application that gets into our high flow metering systems. Um, I won't get into detail on this, but uh, we do a lot of sports turf. We're replacing these complicated injectors um, that allow you to uh, eliminate all the calculations and, and electrical connections. Um, we're putting in three of them at Stanford University. They got three pump stations just to run the electrical. So one of those stations was going to be thirty thousand dollars, and at list price, the three systems for those pump stations will be about fifteen thousand dollars. So these systems can uh, deliver biostimulants, wetting agents, acids, surfactants, controls, pesticides, iron. Uh, anything through the irrigation system. Uh, they have no moving parts, require no electricity, there's no pump heads to fail, no more injection limits, no more maximum flow re requirements, uh, and they're obviously the lowest cost. We do have seven different gauge packages available for our high flow systems um, that we can dial that system in specifically. We engineer for every application. So if you have a specific need, uh, let us know and we're happy to help you with it. Again, we have PVC connections up to four inch and we use saddle connections beyond that. Uh, the fittings um, are stainless steel and they're coated. So we can uh, deliver acid if, it, if you require it. There's no pre-mixing or dilution required. Uh, basically, you're pouring in concentrate, um, and we do all the mixing for you. Again, we layer the water on the top, and we're pulling from the bottom, so it stays consistent throughout the, the flow cycle of, of the delivery. Again, there's that independent study that was done by Scott for us. Um, a pound per thousand, per thousand square feet on turf, uh, more, most sports turf. With the biology added, we can actually cut that back to a half a pound, and we've seen results down to a third of a pound when we add bacteria, fungi, protozoa, enzymes. We add seven beneficial strains of mycorrhizae to one of our products. Um, it's phenomenal. If you think about it, I do presentations all over the country to contractors, and I always ask them, who's feeding the forest? We were all taught in school you need so much nitrogen and so forth, and nobody's feeding the forest. Well, the truth of the matter is that forest is feeding itself, and the soil food web has been developed over thousands of years, but as contractors, developers, builders, designers, we scrape all the topsoil away, and then we build our buildings and so forth, and then we're putting granular fertilizer. Eighty percent of the country has salty soils. Uh, granular fertilizer is a salt pellet that they chemically bind nutrients to to dissolve with salty water. So you're putting salt on salt with salt and wondering why the plants are stressing. Um, salt dries things out. And so we're just training people to rethink and add biology to the soil to get the soil to work for you. And that's one of the keys to our success over the years is finding that biology and putting it and implementing it to counteract the salts that are out there. Basically, you're just making two connections, uh, one to catch the water, we meter the amount that you want out, and the fertilizer is simply injected downstream. Saddle connections, uh, again, are stainless steel, uh, very simple. We can do with uh, reclaimed water. We've been doing that for many years. Uh, we can build custom schools if you need them. Uh, for specific applications. Um, we've done that before out of stainless. Um, you can do PVC connections. Uh, we have the high flow connections, which are much larger. And then we go all the way up to uh, the 600 gallon tank, which holds 6,000 pounds of water soluble. That's more of a grower application. Um, golf courses use these for supplements, acids, wetting agents biostimulants and things like that. But this 45-gallon tank holds 450 pounds. That's equivalent to a 1,250-gallon liquid tank. So the footprint is very small, 
and uh, they're extremely affordable and effective. It's a pretty simple setup. Uh, we do have check valves on the high flow systems that only allow the product in, um, water in, and keep whatever's in the tank in the tank. The check valve flows in, and this one keeps it flowing this way so there's no potential of backflow on these. The fill valve, uh, as you saw in the picture prior to that, you would pour the dry product in there and allow it to go through. If you ever wanted to bypass it, you simply shut these two valves off and bypass the system. And they're actually portable. So everything's a union fitting, uh, completely interchangeable, replaceable, um, extremely uh, user friendly. It's another application where we built a spool. Um, this was a uh, on a very large HOA project and we just built the spool. We do because on some drip applications that they have extremely low flow, we recommend a butterfly valve in between to create pressure differential on very low flow. Uh, when you get a four inch main line and you're only producing, you know, 40 gallons an hour, uh, you need to create a little pressure differential to get that out. But you can feed um, up to 20 acres with that $4,000 list system. So it's very affordable. Um, our high capacity systems, again, fit in valve boxes. We do clamshells. Uh, some installations are in clamshells. This happens to be uh, at a church uh, up in Utah, and they have the system in there that feeds the property. We do offer enclosures that are powder coated. Um, as well. We're doing, uh, actually it'll be on TV in a couple weeks when the USA plays Costa Rica. I was down in Costa Rica to help them install on this hundred million dollar soccer facility. It's an absolutely beautiful facility and uh, we inject the turf and feed everything there in the property. So, anyway, I don't want to bore you too much. Um, I will let Dave take over now. Uh, we're always happy to well, help you with any information that you have. And I do have a couple of questions okay. uh, from people, and you've been sort of answering them, I think, as you've been going along, but I'll repeat them anyway. Um, someone, uh, Bill says, uh, I thought I saw um, one pound per thousand for turf and a half pound for shrubs per thousand. So how do you ensure that this is the amount that is being delivered? Well, our, um, our systems automatically adjust to water flow. So per gallon, um, when you're delivering uh, 40 minutes of water on, on trees and shrubs every other, every third day or whatever, three times a week, uh, the system will provide an adequate amount of water um, that will feed that. Our proportioning is to that gallon of water. And um, the way we size it, for example, we do a lot of, uh, of uh, shopping centers that have drip only. Mm -hmm. So if I have, uh, for example, we have one uh, shopping center here in Vegas that has three points of connection. Uh, they have 600,000 square feet of uh, subsurface drip. And it's all trees and shrubs, no turf and we deliver 100 gallons to each POC. It's a loop system, and that provides adequate feeding at a half a pound per thousand uh, square feet. So when that tank is empty in four to eight weeks, uh, you can refill or let it run water. But uh, that has proven to be uh, the results. When you have a mixed landscape of turf and trees and shrubs, you're typically watering your turf a little bit more than your trees and shrubs anyway, and that's how we get that uh, ratio to work out. I got that. Uh, you had said about uh, drip, and I noticed one question here um, was, you mentioned drip, is there any plugging problems on emitters? No, we actually um, test all the products that we recommend um, for a year, and uh, there are certain manufacturers that we do recommend uh, we actually have products that will unclog uh, calcium buildup and so forth. And the humic and fulvic acids that we recommend to counteract the salts uh, typically 
free those things up and allow them to run continually. But uh, I've had one personally in one of my houses here in Vegas for 14 years and never had a clock driven in and run that system through with no problems. Gotcha. Uh, another question. Um, evidently somebody's doing schools and they say, um, you mentioned schools or this is good for schools. Um, uh, as far as the exposure to the children of the fertilizer, is there a document I can point to that shows that uh, there is no exposure to the children? Obviously, I guess the fertilizer is in the water and it's going yeah, around. I, and, we only recommend non-hazardous products through the system, and we recommend the slow setting for schools all the time because that, again, is less nitrogen than is allowed inside the school through the Safe Water Drinking Act. So we're putting a twentieth of a teaspoon in a gallon of water. Um, literally, uh, the kids could drink out of the sprinklers and there wouldn't be any health issues. Um, we have lots and lots of schools throughout the country that have been using it for many years and uh, have had never had an issue with that. Um, our white paper will document some of that as well, um, but uh, we do have a section on our website specifically directed towards schools, and we're happy to help answer those questions for you. Great. Um, here's another question. How often do you apply the fertilizer and fill the tanks? Well, um, we size them to be filled about every four to six weeks. Now, I recommend when you're going from crack to wheatgrass, I call granular crack because you get the growth surge and then a decline and then a growth surge and then a decline and that causes stress. And So I relate that to crack. We're trying to bring that down to an organic level. Uh, organics are the future, in my opinion. Uh, we have a blend of synthetic and organic to kind of mediate that transition. And we size the systems for about four to six week um, recycle. Now, I do that for the first three to four fills, depending on the health of the landscape and what you're trying to do. Because we have products that will push growth. We have products that will maintain health. We have products that are organic that take 60 to 90 days to react if you're going from a granular. For example, the city of Phoenix uh, converted from synthetics to an organic program. Uh, we do some of their parks now in Phoenix, and we're going to start doing all of them. And uh, our systems um, are feeding 100% organic program to those parks uh, for that liability. And uh, it's about, uh, it took about 60 to 70 days before they saw the results, and now it's, it's tremendous. They won't go back. They, they see it. Uh, but to answer your question, it's about a four to six week range okay. before you refill it. Um, I have one final question here. Yep. Um, and I'll just mention, you had mentioned you have details. It says, do you have details for the product? What valve box and size for what equipment? Um, we and have where on your website? Yeah, we have a, a section on our website for architects and designers. Uh, we have CAD drawings, DWG drawings, and written specifications there for you. Um, we are actually proud to be working with Land LandFX. Uh, we're converting everything to their uh, their schedules, so all that will be available on LandFX as well. But uh, all the details and so forth are on our website. At the very, very bottom of that architect and designer section, it's where to our perspectives, and then architect and designer, and then scroll to the very bottom and you'll see all those uh, CAD drawings. And that's the questions. So. Uh, if you have anything else, uh, Crystal can turn this back over uh, to me. And so I am now showing my screen. And there you have. And let me shrink this up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this. And I've got three situations. 
here's situation one. I have a one inch water meter here. There is, for this hypothetical situation, I have about 22,000 square feet of a mix of stuff, mostly shrubs in this case, in this hypothetical. Um, uh, you know, 22,000 is about roughly a little under half an acre, so consider it you know, a large residence or commercial project. And I've got about, let's say, a third of that, about 7,000 square foot of turf, and then two-thirds of it uh, is in shrubs on here. So I'm going to add to this project, and I've got three situations and they're all the same project, I'm going to add uh, a uh, fertigation system to this. To add that with land effects, you would go to your irrigation manager, go to auxiliary equipment, and you can see I've already added some backflow devices there, and I'm going to say either new right here or I'm going to scroll down and go ahead and pick fertigation, but if I haven't done that and say new, I have to pick it right here because we have to know the topic. So I'm going to pick fertigation and say okay, uh, I'll see the manufacturers, we have easy flow in there, I'll click on Easy Flow, and what I'm going to be seeing there is their product line. Starts with connectors, um, and then supplements on here, and then we have our systems. Uh, there's a high flow system, a high capacity, uh, something for, and I want to put all of these in, just a hose bib situation, and then a standard main line. So, I'll ask Darren for this situation where I have about 7,000 square feet of turf and about 15,000 square feet of shrubs. Um, what would I be putting in the standard into yes. that? It says yeah. up to 60,000 square feet here. Yeah, that, uh, that's what you would need. You would need uh, the standard uh, mainline system. You need seven pounds for your turf and about seven and a half, so you need a system that holds at least 14 pounds, which would be the EZ003. Okay, let's look at those. Here they are. You can always go to more info and then go right to the website on this product, but we start these by mentioning how many square feet of up to so it could be less than that, up to 60,000 square feet of turf or 120,000 square feet of a mix, up to, because when I click on this, uh, I have different options. Each one of those options is, again, up to so many square feet of turf or mix. And so it's just to help you out a little bit right here, we have those square footages and then the size of the tank. And which, I'm sorry, which size tank did you? The EZ003CX. Okay, so here it is, a two and a half gallon tank, and I can see it goes up to uh, 36,000 square feet of a mix, and I sort of got a mix here. That seems reasonable. I'm going to say add to the project. Uh, and let me go ahead and place that into the drawing. I haven't drawn any main line. I do have a hose bib over here and a valve over here because I want to look at something else that could apply to residential also. Um, I'm going to click on placing equipment and specifically auxiliary equipment. I've already got some things added. Uh, here's my easy flow, two and a half gallon right there. I'll place it, and where I'm going to put it is after the backflow device because uh, that's where you would do it, near but after the backflow device. So I'll put it here, and then you put in this geometry, which is a hex, some, some one or two letter definition. I'm just going to say F. We'll remember that definition, and it will show up in the schedule when you run it. So there I put in that particular equipment. Now, I know there's a connector that I would put for that. Uh, is that correct, Darren? That is correct. You'll need a uh, CBB100 for your one-inch backflow. Okay, let me add a connector here. I'm going to go back to auxiliary equipment and back to fertigation, uh, and I'm going to you know, go to easy flow, and here's their connectors. And uh, so these have different sizes for each one. Is it the ball or the slip coupling, or does it matter? It, it does. If you have drip, you always want to put in the ball valve coupling 
unless it's all rotors and you have high flow, ah. I would stay away from this loop. Okay, so the easy ball valve connecting. I'm going to add it. Oh, and there's I think there's an error in the data there, probably with the sizes, but we'll fix that. But it will list all of the different size options, so you would put the size in here that you want. Um, which size option would be appropriate for this situation? The CBV 100, uh, okay. because it's a one inch backflow. All right. If it was a yes. two inch, it'd be a CBV 200. Very good, and it is a one-inch backflow device here. Um, we'll correct that error on the, the size information on there. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pipe this, and I'm drawing mainline pipe, and I'm ob obviously drawing it up from the water meter, including the backflow, connecting to the fertigation. However, I want to note there really is no loss through this in terms of PSI, so we don't even count it as any loss. And then this little main line is running to different situations over here to some valves, to some hose bibs. But uh, I want to put onto this hose bib, because let's pretend this hose bib is to some sort of garden situation, and I want to have some additional unique uh, fertigation for that. Uh, I'm going to assume, uh, and uh, Darren can help me out here, uh, that I'm going to say a new fertigation, and I'm going to add into here, uh, or at least I want to see how this works. This one sort of intrigued, intrigued me. Hose and drip system, uh, and it was for like garden hoses like this. And as my understanding is, it could also be you don't want any fertigation in, for whatever reason, in much of your yard except, let's say, three valves you do. They're very unique. So you could apply this and put this system in just to apply to those three valves. Is that correct in my assumption on that? That is correct. You could run uh, typically a check valve and then have that go just to those three valves in a one-way check situation where you could buy three separate systems and put them after each valve. It's really okay. up to you. We've seen both. Now, in this situation, I have a hose bib. I don't know what it's watering, some sort of garden. And I have this valve. And for whatever reason, I wanted this for just that valve. Which one of these would you say I would apply in those um, situations? I particularly like the top one. It's a PVC unit. The other are poly tanks. Um, the okay. PVC unit is uh, much nicer. All right, so I'll add that in and place that. And here it is right here, and it says it's the EZ1010 HB hose drip, etc. I'll place that, and I'm going to put one near this particular hose bib, a little different geometry, and I'm going to put exactly the same thing right here over there, and of course it remembers now it has a little F in it for or whatever letter you signified. Now, you were saying this would go after the valve, so I'm going to draw a tiny bit of lateral pipe, goes down to my various systems. Uh, I can either show this piped or, you know, I think if you just simply did a thing like that, it's going to indicate to the uh, uh, installer what you want for that. So I've applied to this, you know, a couple of situations for smaller projects. Is there anything else that you could see I would want to do for this, Darren? Well, I, if those are regular hose bibs and you want fresh water and only fertilizer coming out of them when you have the hose bib connection, I would actually run a separate line before your main fertigation device in the center of your page after the backflow to those specific valves. I see, yeah. And this if situation, yeah. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily mix these. Because I'm you, saying, oh, you can put this here, or if you, right. for whatever reason, wanted something unique, yeah, uh, you could do that. But If you have it so hooked up to the main line, then it right. you get fertilizer anyway. That right. So. That is correct. And so you're right. saying, oh, for whatever reason, this is yep. going to here and then to the hose bib. Correct. Or to the hose bib first. Uh, or, 
in that situation. But so you can kind of mix things up a little bit. You don't necessarily need a main fertigation system. You could put individual ones, or you could put just this main one on here, which I think is typically what I would do and uh, for that kind of project. Now I got another project over here. What this one is uh, is a uh, let's say a school campus. It's mostly turf, about 125,000 square feet of planted area, uh, which makes that about whatever, almost three acres, uh, like an elementary school. 90% or 90,000 square feet of it is turf because it's an elementary school, a lot of turf. Uh, 35,000 square feet of shrub area, and let's say the shrub area is in drip and the turf is sprays rotors and that sort of thing. I happen to have an inch and a half water meter and a, uh, my main line I'm estimating at two and a half inches. This is an inch and a half uh, backflow device, let's say. So I'm going to put this system in, small elementary school. Uh, let me go ahead and go to my manager, auxiliary equipment, and new fertigation, and go to easy flow here. And I'm going to uh, assume, let me, let me just guess here. I'm going to assume it's this one here. This was 125,000 square feet, and so I'm going to say, well, it certainly is uh, it's bigger than what this system, uh, this is pretty close, but I'm going to assume it's this more high capacity. Would that be fair that is to say? Correct. Okay, so let me go into that, and I have these options. Of that scenario, which one of these would you use and why? Um, you're, I would personally, um, you could go, depending on budget, you could get away with the 10 HC, but you're really pushing it. I would go with the 17 HC, the second one there. Okay. And that gives me, because I'm going to need a, a capacity of about 107 and a half, 110 pounds of of fertilizer, the 10HC holds about 100 pounds. So you might be able to push it a little bit further, uh, depending on the shape of the property. But let's just be on the safe yeah. side and go with it. Yeah, I, I would have to say that would be, uh, you know, a school doesn't want to necessarily cut it to the bone. They, they want to, uh, uh, in my opinion, I tend to give them a product line that uh, is going to work without doubt. So yeah. personally, and I would pick that one also. The, the larger capacity gives you a longer run time as well. So if you did mm -hmm. fill it to 175 pounds, you're going to fill it the system instead of every six weeks, probably every eight to ten weeks. Okay. So I'll add that one to my project, and I'll place that, of course, after this backflow device. Uh, and that will be this one right here. I've got several of these going on on this project. Uh, again, after the backflow device, and again, whatever letter that I want it to be, it's got a little different geometry in here. And of course, I would pipe this uh, uh, you know, very similar, connect it up, and then go from there and connect up to the rest of my system. But this is after but near the backflow device. Uh, you definitely do not want it between the meter and the backflow device or your source. Let the backflow device do what it's going to do, which is protect your system. Um, my last one, this one is uh, more than one soccer field, let's say. Got a lot of soccer fields, a lot of baseball fields. It's about 430,000 square feet. Almost all of it's turf, 400,000 square feet of turf which is, you know, in the neighborhood of nine acres uh, of turf. Mm, big project. Um, I do have about 30,000 square feet of shrubs. Let's say some perimeter windbreak areas and that sort of thing. But mainly this is a sports field. Uh, I've got a three-inch water meter here. I'm anticipating a four-inch main line. Uh, I'm not sure what size this backflow is. It is a three-inch backflow device. Uh, and so I'm going to pick a system for that. Uh, again, going to auxiliary equipment, saying new, fertigation, 
uh, pick on easy flow, and my guess is going to be this is going to be the big boy here, uh, right in there. Uh, fertigation unit designed for a golf course, sports fields, and that sort of thing. Uh, even though this goes up, this is really up to 250,000 square feet of turf, I would say I'm well exceeding that. So I'm up into this range. Would that be fair to say, Darren? You are correct. Okay, so I'll go to there, and again, which one of these would you pick for that situation and why? Uh, the HF045, because you have 400,000 square feet, we need a capacity of 400 pounds of water soluble. Mm -hmm. um, so that system will adequately feed that project. Okay, add to the project, it's been added. And now I'll place that one again after the backflow device. Now this is a little bigger unit. I'm taking it. Uh, that was this unit right here. Um, what sort of you would want? And maybe on the other ones you would want an enclosure too. I want to look at enclosures. How would you put this in the ground, or how would you enclose this particular tank or well, protect it? This. These systems are vertical tanks. Uh, the other systems all fit in a valve box hidden underground. If you don't have a pump station, um, the footprint of this is maybe three and a half feet wide by five feet tall. Um, we make enclosures that are powder coated green. Uh, we give you a CAD drawing of the cement pad that it would bolt to uh, to secure it and we do offer that enclosure if you don't have a pump station. I gotcha. And quite frankly, in my experience, most sports fields of this level that I've done, I do have a pump station for it. Correct. There's just an enormous amount of pressure control that needs to be done. So actually fairly near, and often I'll put the backflow device, because that's a pretty big backflow device, a three inch, that, that's a sizable little guy. Uh, I would put that in an enclosed area near the point of connection and then have the whole pump station thing. So I'm going to say, let's pretend there's a um, an enclosed area here, and I'm going to put that uh, in there, and I'm going to move my backflow device uh, somewhere in that. And of course, there would also be uh, pumping equipment, uh, electrical, uh, there's other things involved there. So basically, my uh, I will add pumping equipment to this project, take that time, but I'm basically piping in to my probably my backflow and then the pumping equipment and then fertigation as I'm leaving and then going out into my sports field area over here. Uh, but I would probably uh, put some kind of you know, concrete block or fenced or some kind of enclosure around this for protection. Uh, often these get pretty exotic situations uh, of equipment there that, that need to be protected. If it were going to be an enclosure, uh, I do want to look at uh, under uh, this fertigation, uh, whoop, got to hit fertigation. Let's see, I was wondering if we had, I guess we don't have, we're going to have to add the enclosures on here. So uh, um, we'll do that. Uh, today we'll add that in, but uh, we'll bring enclosures uh, into the system. And just to let you know, this is right now ordered alphabetically, but we're going to let Darren tell us the more correct and, and you know, make the order of the equipment that you see uh, more, in, more logical uh, on there rather than just alphabetical. So you don't necessarily see fertilizer and bio supplements or stimulants right off the bat. Uh, you'll see the different kinds of uh, systems and then other things, but slight variation. So you may see a slightly different screen. But we're also going to add enclosures in on here. Um, as far as the supplements and stimulants, um, let us just say um, for any of these projects, I want the contractor to include in his bid 
this. I don't want them just to put the equipment in and walk away and say, hey, you didn't put it in the bid. Um, let's, take, let's just take the sports field for the sake of argument. Um, which one of these would you add for that sports field that you would want while the contractor is maintaining this, and let's just say they're maintaining it for a fairly short period of time, 60 days or 90 days, uh, sure. what would you want them to put into here and include in the bid? Um, on, our, on our little sheet, we ask you specific notes and so forth, but uh, typically, is it new seed or new sod, or is it um, established in a retrofit? Those are the questions that we ask because we recommend different products for different times of the year, different applications, and so forth, and we're happy to consult at no charge uh, on those projects. But let's say it's, it's a turf rolled out sod situation, and we'd be putting in the fertilizer and biostimulants. Okay. Now, did you say you did you say you include some supplements or with with the the, uh, the easy grow product fertilizer? Or? Yes, the easy grow fertilizer, the fertilizer biostimulant in the bucket shown, uh, has mm -hmm. uh, a twenty three thirteen ten with an active bacteria, fungi, protozoa, enzymes, mycorrhizae, seven beneficial strains of mycorrhizae proteins, and 73 trace nutrients already in that fertilizer blend. That, that's this one right here, right? Correct, correct. Okay, let me just see what we, we get. When I go to that, I get this right here. And I don't know, you said, let's say a sod. I don't care whether it's sod or seed. Right. But uh, just for the sake of argument, we got a lot of turf. And if, if you... Sod. Let me give you an example. If it's established turf and we're just retrofitting and, and upgrading it and it's the summertime, the, the 28818 is an excellent formula for turf. If it's a new and you're, you're having issues with sod and, and, and problems like that, um, a lot of times we'll recommend the 102030 on brand new landscapes just to establish the root system. Okay. I would then add the biostimulant separately to that, um, but um, and that's a soil fertility booster just above that. Okay. So those um, two products on a brand new. Let me uh, let me landscape. try to do this. Uh, I'm going to add that one, and uh, I just am doing this for my own benefit right now. I want to add. Uh, and obviously, I think I would make this more of uh, in the specifications rather than on the drawing. But, and you said sure. uh, besides this one, the one directly above it. Correct. That's the, okay. the biology. Okay. Uh -huh. That I just wanted to see for myself if we could add two of those in. Uh, so we're going to have to make it. Uh, I'll note that down so we can add more than one because we're assuming you add one, you're done. But. Uh, let me go ahead and put at least that one in here. Um, that's this fertilizer. And sometimes it's odd to say you're going to be putting in something. Um, I can still keep it an F because it's different geometry. Uh, and how many of those would you want for this particular well, you large? Need 400 pounds for the 400,000 square feet. OK, and how many pounds were in this? Uh, that's a 25-pound bag. Okay. Well, there's a lot of them. Uh, I yeah. Think I might. I might not do it this way. I'm gonna. Yeah. And I need four of those. But I, I just want to point out. I think it's fair in the game of construction documents to do something like this because now when I run the schedule, and this is going to include everything I put in. Uh, the irrigation schedule on here, and I'll just let it be however it's going to do all points of connections. Uh, what I'm going to end up with is my equipment on here and, you know, backflow devices and that sort of thing. But here I'm seeing very specifically uh, systems that are going in for this fertigation on here, and I've got four of these right there. 
uh, going in. So there's no way the contractor can miss this as far as including it on his bid. Uh, but again, I think in this case, I think I would put this as in the specifications, and you would have for that big of a project, you would have some well, uh, fairly intensive specifications. Yeah, you have 16 just for that 45-gallon system. Yeah, so uh, I think for that little one that's a residential, I could do it this way because I'm making sure they get it, not necessarily noting it in specifications. So it just depends on the project. But basically, this is how all of that uh, equipment that we added ended up looking in this uh, uh, schedule uh, for what we did here. So that's, I think, how to put this stuff in. I think it's very informational. It is a very much a green product because you want to make your fertilization, I think, you, gotta, you should have it, but it should be efficient and as minimal as possible. And it sounds like this water-soluble solution, which I always like for fertilization, is uh, a really good uh, way to go. Um, now, I, I, I'd just like to make a note on, on a retrofit, uh -huh. if, the, if, if any of uh, the architects and designers are doing retrofits, we typically reduce the water usage by 10% the day we install fertigation because we're putting nutrition oh. in the water. And 60 to 90 days later, if you add the biology, we can reduce the water another 10%. That 20% gives your customer an ROI of 11 months on the cost of the equipment. So Good the point. payback is very, very quick um, and virtually eliminates transplant shock. Uh, you're reducing fertilizer runoff. You're reducing the carbon footprint by not allowing blowers to blow off sidewalks and so forth. So there's just so many benefits to this concept uh, that we truly believe that it is the future uh, for the industry. Well, I think that's you know, the fact that it's greener, uses less water, and you can tell the owner it has an ROI of less than one year. Um, it becomes a no-brainer. Well, unless there's any other comments, uh, do you have anything else that you want to uh, end with, Darren? No, I just uh, appreciate the time and look forward to helping anybody that we can. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. We do this from sun up to sundown every day and uh, we are very passionate about what we do and uh, we're probably one of the best uh, at what we do. We've got hundreds of thousands of systems all over the world from Formula One track to the Smithsonian Institute to uh, the Twin Towers Memorial in New York City uh, to the Cincinnati Zoo to resorts all over the world. So uh, we want to help. Um, if there's anything we can do, please contact. So if you want to know more about it, just add it to your project and click more info, and you'll get more info right from their website on this particular uh, item that you clicked on, and, and you can go right to their website and get more info, contact them, etc. I think it's a smart thing. Uh, thanks very much, and I want to tell everybody, have a great weekend. And that's it. Goodbye. Take, take care.